have fun. You know, so uh, I want to get the radio portion going as well as the television portion of it. So, hey, Todd, let's do it. It's Your Life is sponsored by James J.C. Cooley. Life is a series of circles and cycles, phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the James Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and to overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. Hello, hello. Hey, I'm Dr. Michelle Cooley, and welcome to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, um, with Dr. James Cooley. Um, I am Michelle Cooley, and the host, James Cooley, will be with us in a second. Here he is, audience. So if you don't know, we are on vacation live from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and we are there at the amazing, amazing Secrets Resort in Ballarda Bay. I mean, there's a, there's a side for the secrets and a side for the dreams. The dream side is, you know, family with small kids. The secret side is adults only, but both sides are amazing. And, you know, we needed a vacation and we are here and it, it, it is so beautiful out here. What do you think, James? Well, you know, it, it's so beautiful out here and uh, just uh, getting away on vacation, uh, enjoying ourselves. And and I tell you what, you can go on a journey with us. If you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is just call in at 1-866-577-2473 or go to any platform that you own. Uh, just uh, uh, ask us any questions that, that you like. And um, I promise you, we're going to tell you a lot about what's happening in Puerto Viagra. Uh, what's happening on, on vacation and what um, everybody should take time to, to go on vacation. You know, so uh, Todd, uh, have you ever been to Puerto Viagra before? I, I'm not too sure if I was, if I have, it was a long time ago, but I know, I mean, there's not a place in Mexico along the coast that isn't beautiful. So I'm sure it's beautiful down there. Man, this is so, so beautiful, man. And uh, we, we got a lot of things that we got planned uh, for, for the next four days. And this is one of them right here, and uh, and uh, you just so happy to be doing um, our show on site, and um, and uh, Michelle and and I are, are going to talk about uh, the importance of, of vacation. And then Michelle, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners uh, the, the title of the show, purpose of the show, and uh, introduce these two absolutely fantastic guests. Yes, the title of the show is Traveling, Exploring New Lands, Learning New Cultures, and Meeting New People. And the purpose of the show is me and Dr. Cooley will be discussing the countries we have visited and, you know, the cultures we've learned and people encountered during our travels and how traveling allows you to experience, to be part of a community other than your own and how traveling to other countries has evolved us and you know, made us appreciate other cultures and also how it's increased our cultural understanding. So, you know, like I was saying earlier on the top of the show, we are in Mexico. We're at the Secrets Resort in Ballada Bay and also the Dreams Resort as well. And like I said, we are just so excited. This resort is beautiful. It is amazing. You know, we got here Sunday and we relaxed a bit and, Yesterday, we just laid out at the beach. Dr. Cooley was just doing his exercise, walking on the beach. <laughs> we had an amazing breakfast. We had, went to a French restaurant yesterday. Uh, and I don't know that much about you know French food. So as far as cuisine, experiencing new things, this was new for me. You know, um, so I don't eat a lot of French food because I really don't experience, but it was, it's an amazing, it, it's an amazing, amazing food. So we're really excited. And also what else? Um, the beach, the beach was amazing. I just laid out and met a nice couple there and we just talked and we, it, the breeze from the ocean, it was so 
so beautiful and I absolutely love it. Um, today, you know, we just did a little bit exploring, but tonight we're going to an Italian restaurant on the resort and we're going to go to the spa today, like get some massages, go to the jacuzzi, sauna, steam room. You know, I love traveling. And if you can, please travel. You don't have to travel outside the country. You travel within the United States or wherever you choose. But you get to learn a lot about, you know, different places, um, certain customs. And like I said, the cuisine that people do eat. And um, yesterday, what did I have? I had this thing called Brie and I never had it before. Was it a French restaurant? It was different, but you know what? I tried it. It was okay, but I'm glad I tried it. And you know, the people here at the Secrets and Dreams Resort in Bonarda Bay have made us feel so welcome. Like I'm looking right now, someone going parasailing. I mean, in this water, this 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 ocean. From our hotel, from our resort room, we can hear the waves all night long. Do you know how peaceful that is? How it can make you sleep? And I mean, what do you think, James? Well, I tell you, uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe uh, a vacation like this uh, last couple of days. And uh, you're right about it. You can see everything. It's just so beautiful here. The people at this resort are absolutely outstanding. And uh, I tell you, this is going to be a, a serious experience. And uh, just like Mateo was telling you about the secrets, the secret resorts, uh, what you see on television, all that beautiful stuff, and the, the, the resort itself, the, the rooms, everything is fascinating. It's fascinating. And just being able to get out and just do some things, everything is tropical here. And um, I tell you, we just getting started because we got a lot of adventures coming up. Uh, for as what we're gonna be doing in the next couple of days, I think we're going on. What what are we doing, Michelle? I, I think we are going on a, a couple of. Um, we're going on a cruise, a dinner cruise. Uh, we are, uh, are going to. Uh, There's about, about several different things that we're going to be doing, and I'm just excited about uh, about doing all of these things and. Just getting out, walking on the beach, and just meeting new people from all over, not just in the United States and Mexico, but all over the world. And we all deserve a vacation. Right, Michelle? Oh, yeah. Most definitely. And, you know, sometimes we're so busy, we don't have time to plan. We were thinking about going to a resort for months. I was like, James, we want to go to a resort. We're debating between a cruise and a resort. So let's do a resort. We did a cruise in October. And lo and behold, it was a blessing. Um, we got contacted, not by our own, by this, um, <laughs> this um, travel um and say travel agency, like they connect people with different resorts and they contacted us and boom, we were sold. But, you know, Puerto Vallada, if you've never been to Puerto Vallada, it is beautiful. And like I said, you have got to go to the Dreams or, or Secrets Resort in Vallada Bay. It's all inclusive. My gosh. And the restaurants. And, you know, if you like to have a nice cocktail, it's all inclusive. And just, you know, we have this great sushi bar we go to. I mean, sometimes we don't need a full dinner. We just go to the sushi bar. I don't order a lot of stuff and then we're good. But, you know, traveling is really important to us. And actually, James has traveled more than me. He was in the military and he lived overseas a lot. So there's a lot of places he's been to, like a lot of countries he's visited. Um, he's lived in Japan, Australia. He's Guam. I mean, he has been to so many places and he's going to talk about, you know, the things he learned um, being there, living there. Um, I can honestly say that I'll give you a perfect example. When today we were sitting with this um, sales representative and she was just going over things with us and she sat closer to me instead of close to James. And she said, basically the custom there in Mexico, this is for her, is that the, any you know woman, uh, any female, um, if she's talking to a couple, they have to sit away from the male, closer to the female, out of respect. 
And I thought that was very interesting. I mean, I don't think we do that in the United States. But like I said, everybody's countries and cultures is different. James, I was telling about how we were talking to the sales representative and she sat away from you saying that in the culture of Mexico that, you know, husband and wife, that they have to sit, the, the sit of it's a woman has to sit away from the husband out of respect. So I thought that was interesting. I said, we don't do that in the United States, but hey, there's something we learn here. Well, you know, it's uh, in, in every country that you uh, go to, or 10. There are several different cultures, and uh, most of the time, I would say, uh, you know, you have to, in order to understand uh, the people of that native country, you have to be able to understand their cultures, and some of them you should be able to do. <laughs> I'm talking about, as long as this doesn't cause any uh, harm or damage or violate any of your principles, I think we need to do that. But Michelle, we're going to take a station break, but we're going to come back and we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up even more and, and start talking about coaches, start talking about meeting people. We start talking about the things that we're going to do. It's your life. If you want to be part of this great conversation, just go to the phone, dial one 2473 It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll see you shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome. generation of leaders and heroes get your copy of country boy city boy a journey that ain't over yet by james jc cooley available on amazon and everywhere books are sold streaming now on the answer san diego app and odyssey.com life is a series of circles and cycles phases and stages these are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life you can either ignore them or embrace them welcome to the james cooley show it's your life dr james cooley is a motivational speaker author military veteran and founder of the jc cooley foundation dr cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity it's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow now here's the host of it's your life dr james cooley Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I'm I'm just tip of pin here. I mean, on vacation, uh, just spending time, uh, just enjoying uh, this uh, this great place. Uh, just enjoying with my great, 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 great friend, uh, Dr. Eric Hall. And uh, Dr. Hall, man, I know you've been to the secrets. You've been over here. You've been all over the place. 
You know, uh, can, can you tell our viewers and our listeners what were some of the experiences that you really enjoyed when you was here? Well, Doc, unlike you, uh, you know, I really rest. <laughs> you out there working, man. I really enjoy the beautiful seven star treatment. Everything is inclusive. I mean, they pamper you to death out there, man. And uh, I, you know, my wife and I just really enjoyed it. We we got a chance to get out there and do some of the, you know, the the things out there. You know, horseback riding on the beach and sand dunes and you know all those different things jet skiing you know we're thrill seekers so but it's definitely a beautiful resort man and uh they pamper you beyond measures so i enjoyed it man, you how are you guys doing out there hey, you're doing absolutely fine but doc let me tell you something man. the food here is absolutely fantastic if i wasn't a control eater man i probably already have gained about 200 pounds I mean, they give you anything that you want, all of the drinks, anything, everything is when they say inclusive, yes, sir. It really they really mean inclusive. They, they do, and, they, you know, they got a motto that says, like, um, our answer is yes. Now, what's your question? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. We, we, we're just having a blast, Dr. Hall. I mean, uh, we already made plans for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, we're doing a city tour. Um, they're showing us just basically the city of Puerto Vallada. And, um, you know, we scheduled um, tonight, we're going to an Italian restaurant. Tomorrow is like a hibachi place. And Thursday, and Thursday, we're doing like this boat ride and we get to see this show. We're going to the boat, um, we're going to a beach. And it's like a romantic, you know, boat ride, beach excursion, and the show we're going to see. So we're really excited about that. And yeah, we took some time to work out, but um, we were so happy. We really needed this. We really needed a vacation. And I'm just so happy that my husband planned this. And, um, you know, he, he may work a little bit, but, you know, it's not a lot where we don't spend time together. And I'm, Resort is beautiful. Our room is great. We have a great view, a great balcony view. But one of the things we're going to talk about is just cultures and cuisine that we have, you know, experienced living in different places. So I want to ask you: Can you tell us about a place that you that you have traveled to where the cuisine is not what you thought it would be, and that you actually liked it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, traveling all over the world, I, there's probably many, but I think the one that stands out the most was in Africa. I was in Johannesburg, and it's called uh, uh, Carnivores, the restaurant. So it's like you go in this gaming park where you're actually <laughs> seeing the animals that you could be eating. <laughs> so, so you know, I, I had my boys with me at that particular moment. And, uh, you know, Trayvon and Eric tried some, you know, I mean, there was stuff that probably shouldn't have been on the menu, you know, gorilla and, you know, stuff that we, we couldn't find anywhere else for sure. But I, I you know, I, I'm not that guy that would try anything. But my boys did really uh, enjoy some of the different cuisines and foods. And I didn't think I would enjoy it as much. But, uh, you know, the steak and lamb and the things that, that, you know, I you would love to eat. I think I didn't try anything that was out of the ordinary. Maybe I think, uh, I don't normally eat rabbit. But carnivores let you know it's all a meat lovers thing. They come around with a big giant sword like the Brazilian restaurants we have here. Uh, and, and everything is just long. You got this device on your table, green light, red light, and you flip it on green. And as long as it's on green, they're going to keep bringing you food. So but that was probably one of my most fascinating ones because of the ostrich and other things that you can actually eat there that, you know, made it unique. What about customs? Um, I was just saying in the beginning of the show, uh, we were talking to a, a representative, this, this, this a nice young, this nice lady, and she sat closer to me than she did to James. She said the custom in Mexico, this is what she's saying, is that you got a couple, if a woman representative is, or any one woman's talking, she needs to sit next to the wife and not next to the man out of respect. So when you went to Africa, 
what was the different cultures as far as men and women roles that were interesting to you? You know, Africa is a whole different animal. <laughs> you know, when, when men can have eight wives and all this other stuff, I mean, the culture difference is huge. You know, at, at that particular carnivores, you know, you, we, they make the women come and make you up. So we're in, we got makeup on, we're like uh, part of the village. You know, we have a Zulu tribe and, you know, it was definitely um, a cultural experience. You're in the gaming park where animals that that roam right past the property like i said you could be eating looking out your window and the z a zebra as they would call it would, would, would walk by and uh, you may have some of that sitting on your on your plate you know but the culture of the people though was the, the hospitality is nice they really try to patronize you and and really make you have an experience and and that's what i enjoyed the most well, um, James, so you lived in Australia for a while, and you told me about the kangaroos in your backyard. Can you kind of tell us about it? Like, when you first moved, to, when you when you first stayed in Australia, um, were you scared of the kangaroos? Was it just, was it cute to you having a cute kangaroo in the backyard? How big are they? And, you know, what should you or should you not do with kangaroos? Well, first of all, I mean, just like I said, like when you when you're in a foreign country, you try to adjust to the cultures that they're doing. And the only time I had ever seen a kangaroo was on television, and you know, a Tarzan or something, or some some type of uh, a zoo-like uh, movie or whatever. But in Australia, the kangaroos roam just like people, and they're not afraid of you, and you're not afraid of them. However, <laughs> it's certain kangaroos you have to keep your distance. Uh, they call them big reds. And a big red can get up to eight, nine feet tall. And, you know, they have their, their boxing <laughs> out, out in front of you. And as long as you don't mess with them, they're not going to mess with you. You wake up in the morning, and we used to wake up in the morning, look out in the backyard, you might have 30 or 40 kangaroos. I'm talking about just because they eat grass primarily, eat, eat your grass and stuff. But as soon as you open up the door, you see them, they jump. They go jumping up. I'm talking about seven feet fist like it's nothing, you know. So, uh, but uh, but you get used to to them. And also, just like what Dr. E mentioned, you you better be careful what you order. You can go to Australia, you order a big old gigantic hamburger. Yeah, and that's a kangaroo burger. burger. Uh, that burger right there, you try to eat in the jump. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I spent uh, two months in Australia and, um, you know, we were, I was saying I'm going to play it safe and go to McDonald's and stuff like that. I'm in McDonald's eating a burger, just like you mentioned, and then protesters is out the outside the window. And I'm like, okay, they're protesting Americans being there or something like that. And they're out there at McDonald's is serving baby Joey's as burgers and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, no, like you said, the big reds, those things are, I mean, they, they big, like, you know, you can see one of those things massive and they're muscular. I mean, they're intimidating. I mean, it ain't no cute stuff when you see some of them big old kangaroos and their claws mm -hmm. and, and the power that they look like, you know, and they ain't looking like a boxer because they can't box. These things look like Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. <laughs> so they do kick you if they feel threatened, and that can really cause a lot of... Oh, they, they kill people. They Yeah, I mean, you, you know, if they feel threatened, they can they can kill you. Yeah, they blow uh, with the back leg. Uh, with, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. They get on that tail and they spring loaded like a like a gun type thing, or you know, <laughs> they're powerful. But you know, culture in Australia. I mean, everything, man. Uh, you know, I I loved it. The people, hospitality. I've been to Perth and Fremantle, uh, Brisbane, Sydney. You know, their nude beaches, optional beaches, just surface paradise gold coast paradise it was all an experience so i think i was there in the 80s and you know i'm a teenager sitting there like being wild for real yeah i was there in the 80s as well and um, australia is a, a country that has seven states and uh i would have the opportunity to visit all of them 
uh, including Tasmania. Uh, um, Perth, of course, I got there, Sydney, uh, just all over Townsville, you know, a lot of places, Doc, that, 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 that you was going when you was over there as well. You and know so what? You know what? Um, after the, the, after the um, commercial break, both of you, I know, have been to Japan, I believe. And I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that. And I'm going to turn that back over to you, James. You know, yes. Yeah, so we, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, uh, a lot of other countries. Of uh, uh, we're going to have Doctor Doctor Hall. It's going to stick around, and we're just going to have fun. If you want to be part of this conversation, if you want to share some of your stories with us, all you have to do is just call in, call in one eight six six five seven seven two four seven three, or go to the comments and just ask any question you like. It's your life from Doctor James C. C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. There's much truth in a journey that ain't over yet as all of us journey through life's precious gift of time. Dingley here, producer of the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. The youth, young adults, and citizens. and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and uh, I, I, it's, it's, there, there is no better feeling in the world than to be on vacation and enjoying yourself in a nice, beautiful, tropical place. And not just that, but uh, even other places as well, like Italy, uh, Japan, uh, Korea, uh, just all over. All, all of the places are beautiful. Uh, but you have to pick it at the right time of the year. And I tell you, so we're talking about vacation and traveling, why it's important. We're going to hit all of these up right now. Why it's important to take vacations. And and most importantly, who you, who you should take vacation with. I got to say, I'm taking vacation with my beautiful wife. And uh, this is a long and overdue. And so if you want to be part of this great discussion, all you have to do is just go to the phone line, pick up the phone, one 877 2473 or go to the comments, ask any questions, join in on the conversation, and 
just be a part of the show. Uh, Dr. Cooley, you were getting ready to say something. Yeah, I love resorts and I love all inclusive. That's like the best, <laughs> the best type of vacation. So, you know, <laughs> us in the United States, you know, we have different restaurants, you know, Italian food, French food, so on, Japanese food. Question for both of you, um, Dr. Hall and Dr. Cooley. When you both went to Italy and Japan, and when you taste the food of the native, you know, places, how different really it is from the United States. And let's start with you, Dr. Hall. You know, um, I, I, you know, I'm a chef by trade too. So, you know, I'm a connoisseur and a culinary arts specialist. So um, I, I look for, you know, different tastes purposely going to different places. So you have that experience and, uh, you know, Japan was definitely different. They, I don't know if Doc, if you remember, they had this um, egg, uh, like a century old egg. And uh, <laughs> so they try to get you to try some stuff. There's some stuff I definitely wasn't going to try, especially when you smell the thing. But, you know, the culture of food, um, you know, India and all, I, I really love a lot of the places that I had from a cuisine standpoint. And it's really different if you go into their cultural experiences and try some of their cultural cuisines. What do you think, Doc? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, there is so much of a difference in taste uh, from eating Japanese food here in the United States and actually eating Japanese food in Japan. It's just, it's just, there is no, day. it's not, I mean, come on, it just tastes so much better. It's prepared with so much of their culture and ingredients. It's 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 just uh, you can't beat it. And also, you talking about that egg. It's almost like the balut. Balut. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> the balut. No man, it's certain yeah. things you just don't eat. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, just, I don't care what, what you have. Uh, yeah, but, no, uh, that's true. You know, I remember Thailand. Uh, you know, we they we we had to anchor out to sea, so you're coming in on these little liberty boats, and the people, the women in particular, are coming to get you, they're coming out to sea. And I remember this one lady came and she got like a shish kebab and stuffing it in your mouth. I, I'm still in the water trying to make it to the land, and she's meeting, sticking food in your mouth, and got a beer in hand. And I'm eating this stuff, and I'm like, okay, it's pretty good. Because at first, I'm like, what are you sticking in my mouth, right? But I'm going through and eating it. By the time I get to land, I'm like, okay, that barbecue shish kebab was good. You know, I'll get another barbecue beef. She's like, barbecue beef? No, that's barbecue monkey. (laughs) Man, I was so mad. I'm ready to fight. (laughs) You you know, that happened to me a couple of times, Doc. When I was a monkey? Barbecue monkey. Uh -uh. Over in Korea, um, you do not, at least I didn't when I was there, I did not see any animals. I'm talking about like dogs. Yeah, right, uh, right. Just roaming the streets. If you did see one, they stayed away from the restaurant side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because sir. you, you go into the restaurants and they have all uh, uh, these animals, dogs, especially dogs, hung up with the head. Only thing showing is their head. And yeah. everything gets his skin. Now, and remember it, in Thailand, they had the little table with the hole in the middle. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah. And the little monkey head would sit up there. Yeah. And then you sit there with a mallet and a fork and a knife, and you. Are... <laughs> no. and, oh my goodness! So yeah, you asking about culture? You can get it. <laughs> and and uh, oh my God. you get you get it where they had and 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 they're not running around here holding up signs and protesting. And, yeah. and and this and that and so you have to be very careful yeah with what you're eating or you, you have to ask if you ask they would tell you yeah yeah but if you just want to try something because it's it's like what you were saying dog they came up there putting food in your mouth i i don't know if i'm gonna do that man. You yeah know, right i've seen i've seen the bell pepper and the tomato and, and and seen what looks like a piece of beef but yeah you know, you learn real quick that you can't just assume what something is because that was crazy. 
Oh, yeah, man. So wait a minute. So traveling, I mean, you guys have been to so many places, um, so many countries. So why do you think it's important, if you can, right? Traveling doesn't always have to be um, outside your country. It could be within the United States when you get to see different states, you know, how, you know, wow, this, this is a beautiful state. Like for me, uh, for my previous employer, I've never been to Idaho. And I went to Idaho and went to this area called Coeur d'Alene. It is absolutely beautiful. But see, I would have never gone there unless it was for my um, previous employer, which I am glad I was able to travel to different places. You know, I went to Alaska, you know, just things, you know, within the United States. So my question to both of you is how, if you can, if you're able, especially outside your country, why do you feel it's important to your growth as understanding ultra, ultra other cultures? How important it is for you to be evolved and see how other countries do things, how they live? Why do you think it's important? Let's start with you, Dr. Hall. Well, I mean, it's a great point. Um, I think because I was in the military, it made me appreciate other nationalities and uh, culture is just based on, you know, how we can all get along. Because once you understand them and, and they understand you, it's more of a friendlier type of situation to, to really explore the different cult, the cultural differences. And I, I can appreciate that more. So I learned a lot by getting outside of the country. You know, even like you said, in the U.S., my wife was from New Orleans. So you might as well call New Orleans a different country because this <laughs> it was some things I experienced down there. I, I never knew what a garfish was. And I, I seen the one for the first time and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my goodness, somebody killed a gator, an alligator. <laughs> and they're like, no, that's not a gar that's not a gator, that's a garfish. I'm like, that thing got a trump, uh, you know, a big mouth with all these teeth in there. That's an alligator. They like, no, it's a garfish. And they grabbed it and they they took it to the grill and cooked it. And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> but in different cultures, I think it gives you the ability to grow and appreciate other people and ethnicities when you understand a little bit more about the different cultural differences. So that's just my opinion. You know, it's interesting. I'm glad you mentioned that about New Orleans, you know, within the United States, Louisiana. So James has been to New York before, but he's never really explored it until after we got married. So we went to the city. We hung out in Manhattan and he, first of all, he loved it. He loved the vendors on the street, you know, it's cheap to buy the food and everything like that. But as you know, Dr. Hall, you've, um, you're from the East Coast, you're from the New Jersey, New York area. It's a fast paced city. Um, the, the sidewalks are wide. You keep doing what you need to do. You mind your own business, but you're still cognizant of yeah, who you have to be. around you. Even though you have, you're looking straight, you're still aware. But when tourists come there, you know, they may be a little bit more relaxed, leave their stuff where they're not supposed to, because, you know, people might take it, unfortunately. But um, James, what did you learn really exploring New York City when you were in Manhattan that um, you didn't know before? Well, you know, I, I learned so many things, but I tell you what, we're going to hold that question until after we take the break. And then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about uh, my, my most favorite thing to do when I'm in, in New York City. And that's the food truck, <laughs> you know. And uh, I tell you, we're gonna talk about other things as well. But I, if you want to be part of this great conversation, all you have to do is just go to the phone one eight six six five seven seven two four seven three or whichever platform you're watching on, whether E three six TV, YouTube, or whatever you're watching on. Just go to the comments and ask any question you like. Yes, you're live from Dr. James J C Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. Cheers, Dr. Cooley. Cheers. Hey. <laughs> hey, Doc, you can just throw your hand up in there anyway. There's more stories <laughs> of greatness to help you overcome adversity. Coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. The J.C. Cooley Foundation is a nonprofit organization that was...
The J.C. Cooley Foundation is a nonprofit organization that was started in October of 2014. The J.C. Cooley Foundation continues to strive to expand its programs and offerings to the youth, young adults, and citizens of our great communities nationwide and overseas. We hope that you'll be able to take part in one or more of the many exciting events that we're offering this year and experience firsthand the pride we take in supporting our cause. It's our mission to equip the youth of today for the challenges of tomorrow. And we rely heavily on the generosity of individuals and business owners for support. Without the assistance of community-minded individuals just like you, we wouldn't be able to serve our youth each year. We ask that you make a commitment to support our annual appeal by making a cash donation. This year's goal is $50,000. Your generosity will assist us in making a difference in the lives of the youth in our community. You can give online at CooleyFoundation.org. Remember that every donation makes a difference regardless of size. The J.C. Cooley Foundation thanks you in advance for your contribution. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life and wow, having so much fun here. I, I think we messing up the commercials and everything. And, and plus, you know, doing the commercial, well, prior to Michelle had a drink sent over here. And I still got a workout I got to do once we get out there. <laughs> oh, Doc, Doc, Doc went and got one as well. You I'm know, still so. left out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, hey, hey, I tell you, since we have this, why don't we wish everybody out there a happy, happy, taking a vacation real soon if you're not already there you know so take one you know so this toast is you. <laughs> you know so we're talking vacations we're talking about places i know michelle prior to the break you was asking me a question about new york now i love new york for the first three days <laughs> after that <laughs> I uh, I can't yeah. deal with New York that much. There's too many people there. Uh, no, but, it's my city, my hometown, where I grew up. You're just not used to it. But when you did go visit New York, what was your favorite thing to do, and what did you love about it? My favorite thing to do was those food trucks. I mean, I love uh, that the food that they cook on those things. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. Central Park, I really enjoyed that because uh, I saw how people meet each other, how they fall in love. And if I was a single person in New York or a guy, I would go rent me a dog. <laughs> you find your walk, girlfriend. Walk all over, over Central Park. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I believe that the elephant man could get a date in Central Park. <laughs> you know, but you so, but it's you also loved people. the World Financial Center. You love like exploring that as well, I believe. And there was um, one more thing you said you liked. Um, you like the food truck. You like the jerk chicken oh, yeah. and the rice and beans that you got from the food truck. Doc, have you been into any of the? Well, I know the World Trade Center wasn't there, but you got the new World Trade Center. There used to be this experience that. Um, in, in the World Trade Center, there's a park inside the building. So you'll see these ducks walk into the building and go on the elevator and go up to a park. And, and it was so much stuff about some of the, you know, the different tourist things that you can go do there. New York has so many different levels of elements. Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, Battery Park, Central Park. So much to do there, in addition to all the lovely restaurants, man. Uh, it's just so much. But you're right, it's, it's fast paced. It's a lot of people. You know, tourists stick out like a sore thumb because they want to look up and, 
mess around and get your necklace snatched off of you. <laughs> Let me leave you my know? purse. Let me leave my wallet here while I take it. up here, picture. man. <laughs> You, you know, Wait. but New York, I, I, I really like it uh, during the holidays uh, when, when they got the Christmas and New Year's uh, decoration out. Festivities. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's just uh, it's so beautiful. It's uh, It wasn't anything that I did not like about New York other than it was too many people. And I, I, hate, did, I right? hate this. I hate white riding uh, the subway. Uh, I'm talking about especially you subway. Take, a subway, take, take you an hour to get somewhere. You're going out under all these tunnels, under the water. You're doing all this other crazy stuff. Um, didn't like that, you know. This oh. because you're locked up and you don't know what's going to happen. Now, now you know if you drove in New York, you would you would go crazy. Yeah. Because of the traffic, you have to not only double park but triple park, and you have to really know how to parallel park if you're going to drive through um, the city of any of the boroughs. But one thing you did like when you went into the subway, there were people playing like the instruments oh, yeah. and stuff like that. He was videotaping it like a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, some of, some of, some of those. Um, uh, entertainers, I guess that's what you call them. Uh, when you go in and they sit back and got this thing for putting the money in, these guys are really, really good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Did you see the naked cowboy? You did. Uh, did you, James? You saw the naked cowboy. He was in Times Square. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> and some of those guys have been out there for years too, man. So, you know, I remember taking my family back there. And I, and I, it's, it's like I say about even getting out, out of the country. New York is definitely a place that people should experience. I, I say get in there, experience, and get out of there. Because <laughs> as I'm from back that way, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, it could be a bit much at times. You know, I, San Francisco is a little milder version of a New York. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't take the temperament of New York, then it's like, okay, you can get the big city feel. You know, the big city experience without the big city field like New York, you know what I mean, like San Francisco. So that's what Johannesburg reminded me of. I, I described Johannesburg. If you took San Diego and San Francisco and put it together, that's Joburg. Beautiful people, culture, everybody's there. The little lady from Macon, Georgia to, you know, Osama bin Laden when he was live. I was like, if they're looking for him, he's here, you know, so... Yeah, traveling, I think, is a great culture. I mean, you guys are loving the turn down service when they come and pamper you with chocolate and warm up your beds and bring you beers and drinks and all, everything to the rule with the turn down at night. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they, well they, you they, know what, man? That's kind of shocking because they do that every night, like say, eight or nine o'clock. Knocking on the door. Yeah, knocking knocking on the door. On the door. Turn down like, service. <laughs> and it's, it's like, wow, what, what? Were we expecting somebody? And oh, we just brought you a bottle of wine. Yeah. Oh, we, we brought you some apples and some fruit all basket and all this other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't even have to bring our toothbrush or toothpaste here because they already supplied it for yeah, us. Everything, like, everything, oh. everything is here. I mean, they every, say everything, everything inclusive. I mean, they, okay. they really go out the way, man. And like I said, I, we did the shows, we did the everything that was, uh, you know, when we, we experienced it because we flew in from Africa. And it was our, our nephew and uh, their their wedding anniversary. And so, you know, we, we missed the wedding because we was in Africa, but we promised the will. So we crashed the honeymoon. And it, they, they was like the best experience for them because they were, you know, mild mannered, you know. And uh, I'm like, man, we going on jet skis. My wife, we, we parasail. We, we was doing everything, you know. And they, and they said they would have never done that. They would just stayed in the room if we hadn't come down there. So... It, it was great. Oh, yeah. I, I got a question for both of you. Okay, so Doc, you done been to over 100 countries, and so have I, and maybe more than that. If you had to choose a place, I mean, what is your dream place to go visit that you have not visited? That I have not visited? Yes. Oh, I, I don't know of any. You know, I, I, you know, because, you know, the first time, you know, when you're financially able to go somewhere, we want to go to all those places, Bahamas, Aruba, Hawaii, all those things. Right. So but I had already done all those things. So the, the one thing I experienced, um, you know, I really enjoyed uh, what's that uh, Atlantis. So there's only two in the world. 
and, you know, when I experienced that, uh, been to Putamita and all these other places, right? But Atlantis was really, the Atlantis in Dubai, you go a mile underneath the water and then come back up in the hotel and you got rooms where you can wake up and you see an orca or a shark right outside your window when you wake up because your room is underwater. I mean, those are experiences that change your life because, you know, you, it's not too many places like that. You know what I mean? So, but when people get money and they want to go somewhere, um, I just think that the, the places in Africa are so underrated and so left out because we don't hear nothing about it. And most of the wonders of the world is in Africa, the pyramids and Egypt and all these other things. They call them Middle East and called Dubai, but that's Africa. It's all Africa. And Cape Town, See, you can have all your beach cities. Like, you know, I, I loved it there in Puerto Vallarta. We've been to, like I said, uh, Cabo San Lucas, you know, all the different places down there, right, to travel. But when you go to um, South Africa and go to Cape Town, I mean, it's some of the most beautiful beaches you'll ever see. Waves, surfers, just uh, everything, man. And it's like you can have Hawaii and everywhere else now when, when it comes down to Cape Town, so. Wow. I appreciate being able to experience those things. But yeah, we got less than three minutes to go. Uh, what, uh, what is one place that uh, that you're going to make me take you that you have to go? I'll say two, Australia and Bora Bora. Bora Bora, I was looking on a travel channel and I it's beautiful from what I've seen. Um, and, you know, that's not like the typical place people will want to go, but when you look at the travel channel or whatever, and you just do your research, not look at the typical places, you get to see some amazing places that people that people really don't talk about that much. So definitely, I would love to go to Australia. I, my next trip, let's say, I want to see architecture, you know, history. Uh, it doesn't have to be tropical. If that makes sense. Yeah, like uh, your old towns in Italy and Rome and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, places that uh, I, mean, I have pr pretty much been all all over except Africa. You know, that's the only place that I can say that um, I truly want, want to check out and figure out uh, where my culture is. Because you never can know how far you can go unless you know where you came from. I think it's so important that we all need to have an understanding of where we came from because the black, white, pink, gold, and purple in order to truly enjoy your life and in order for us to truly enjoy uh, where we're going. I tell you, we have came down to the last minute of the show, and I just want to thank thank you, Doc, for you know, coming on with us today. It's just been absolutely fun. Uh, I always have to thank Dr. Uh, Michelle Denise Cooley for putting together a great, great show. Hey, that's uh, a whole nother glass over there. That's a different and I didn't even I didn't even order it. She was just so kind <laughs> for bringing me drinks. <laughs> and I, I got to thank uh, our viewers and our listeners for tuning in to the James Cooley Show. We'll be back tomorrow. Same time. Same place. Remember, always dream big. Think big and be big. Yes, your life. We'll Happy anniversary, you guys. Enjoy. Enjoy. Love you guys. God bless. Love you. Love you. Thanks for joining us for the James Cooley Show. It's your life. To learn more about Dr. James Cooley and how you can support the show or become a guest, visit CooleyFoundation.org. Join James for more motivation and inspiration to help you become equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. This has been It's Your Life with Dr. James Cooley, where you learn how to dream big, think big, and be big in everything you do. It's Your Life is sponsored by James J.C. Cooley.